That is it. The 2020 U.S. Men's National Team program schedule has come to a close. Grand total of three games in 2020. We know why, for obvious reasons. We're thankful we were able to get a couple games here at the end. The final game against Panama in a small town in Austria. Of course, 2020 COVID, of course. Pretty good. A 6-2 was not a very good Panamanian team. And there were some things you could nitpick about the U.S. effort. Uh, at the top of the list for me, and I'll just get this out, is the way they start halves. First half against Wales started. It was, all, it was in, it's hard to start games all guns blazing, but it's a habit. Both halves, they, they struggled with that against Panama. But that's all right. We'll go over a few things and what it means for the U.S. as we look towards 2021, which... God willing, will be uh, action-packed, major competitions, World Cup qualifying, and maybe three or four games against Mexico, and Olympic qualifying, and the Olympics. By the way, I wore this black, because when I blend in here, it kind of looks, can't see me. Can you see me? I blended in all there. But uh, I, I got to mix it up, because I wear a lot of black. Maybe I'll change the tarp there a little to a different color. One big piece of homework for the U.S. men's national team coming to this game is the striker position. The false nine, I hate a false nine. False nines are, are false. So they put a real number nine, Nicholas Gioacchini, who uh, is a young man from Kansas City playing second division of France, came in, scored two goals. Sebastian Soto, in a short amount of time, did the same. Tremendous impact by these forwards. And whether it's a false nine or a true nine, one thing you would have noticed in this game against Panama and something that this system is going to provide, whether it's the fullbacks, whether it's the wide midfielders, they're going to cross the ball in a lot. So you need someone in the middle either to head into the goal, which is your best option, or find someone else. That was me doing a header. So good strikers are coming in. Now, the MLS has a lot of good strikers, and I think they'll all get a look here at some point. Josie Altador, Jossie Zardes, Jeremy Abobasi. You also have Josh Sargent. But this competition is brewing now, and that's a great development out of this Panama game. It is... Um, People are talking about this squad. I think that's really good. And I wanted to point out one of uh, our, my loyal listeners here on my burgeoning YouTube account uh, from Ermin, who saw my video about the Wales game. He, he said this, great video. I'm not American, but I'm interested to see if they can pull it off. By far, the most interesting national team at this moment, followed by Norway. Most interesting team. Isn't that something? You know what it is when you're a soccer fan and you, you love this game, you follow your national team, but you follow other national teams that are interesting. We follow the Brazilian team. We follow Belgium. We follow England. We're not from there, but we follow them because it's nice to look at. This is something that's going to happen with this team because of these players in Europe that are at such a high level and are known quantities. We're going to get fans from all over the planet Tune in for this U.S. men's national team. We're going to get fans tuning in because it's a nice watch. Because they're fans of Gio Reyna in Germany at Borussia Dortmund. They are fans of Serginho Dest in uh, Barcelona. You play If you start every game for Barcelona, which is just about where he's at, you, get to, you become a big star. Tyler Adams in Germany. Weston McKinney, who gave us one of, hey, it goes a fi. He did one of those. At Juventus, the list goes on and these young players are fitting in there that this is a very sexy team. People want to see it. Norway was mentioned by Ermin. People tune in for Norway because they want to see uh, Holland and others. This is going to develop. It's just great news across the board. Gio Reyna, our fearless leader, leader, gets his first goal in just his second game. He is going to be the guy. Again, this was not really... I thought the U.S. played 25 to 30 good minutes out of a possible 90, and they scored six goals. So if they can get that up to 60, look out. There is a, a, a few guys that uh, obviously made a big impression. We talked about the strikers. Yunus Musa is... No one knew about he, this. He was delivered in a Moses basket at our doorstep, a gift from the soccer gods. Here is a guy who is 17, who is incredible, a known quantity, playing in Spain for Valencia. He's going to draw fans as he gets older, and he plays here. We don't have him completely locked in. We gotta, that's priority one now because he's an everyday player. 
this is when you, you know, a month ago we were talking, we were excited about the men's national team and we didn't even mention Yunus Musa. Now he's in there. It's a very exciting development. Uh, Serginio Dest is the last guy I want to talk about and just the fact that what a world of possibilities he can open because he can play well as a right back and then he can play well as a left back. He takes on players. The width is obviously a big issue and I think that's something we are going to develop. The crosses, by my count, five of the six U.S. goals coming off crosses. So pretty huge there. Forgive me as I go through this one more time to make sure I got everything. I think I did. We're looking good. I will see you in 2021 to talk about the U.S. men's national team. And please subscribe to the Soccer OG.